all right greetings folks welcome to another train sim classic video today we got something pretty interesting to look at we're going to kind of test it out of sorts uh this is an e60 thank you miss this is an e60 enhancement pack for the e60 uh that came along with the very nice and new uh amfleets uh from repo uh late in 2022 i want to say in about december and uh, it was, it's, I mean, it's right here in front of us. It's a really nice looking model. Uh, all things considered, I think it's definitely top tier in anything that's ever been released uh, on Steam, especially for, uh, you know, Northern American passenger equipment. Basically, absolute top tier in that department. Anyway, that aside. So it was okay. Um, it, you know, I had some some weird little things here and there some of the sounds were very crusty uh sounding um you know this and that and all that but it was okay overall and uh, i mean you can look on steam your, yourself it's got a, a very positive um you know review overall anyhow uh, of course as always the community you know have taken it upon themselves to uh make it top tier generally that's what happens if there's a good enough base you know for things to be done then uh you know people get to work and it's always very nice for the community as a whole uh to use this kind of stuff because it's perfect so for example like the am fleets that came with this like i've got sat down here beside the uh, engine um this was an enhancement pack a fantastic enhancement pack i'll link this down below uh if you want to go and take a look at that which i did a video as well i'll try and pop those in the top right hand corner right about now uh if you want to check out that for the am fleet enhancement pack and just the standard video that I did when this came out, uh, if you'd like to check that out. Kind of like a before and after type deal. Anyway, this is focused on an enhancement pack of sorts uh, for the Amtrak E60. So just a tiny bit. I'm not going to go full wiki. Uh, the E60 was built by General Electric between 1972 and 1983 at about 73 units. Now, the initial design was for the Black Mesa and Lake Powell Railroad, a kind of like a sequestered railroad uh, not adjoining any other rail lines that just predominantly holds uh, holds coal I think I said that right holds coal yes a coal hauling route that's what this thing was built for uh, Amtrak of course you know had the old GG ones they needed something new something for the Northeast Corridor something fast uh, and then they had some of these built so they had several of these as well some had old steam generators um and then later on had in power and that whole thing um but anyway they had 6,000 horsepower that's where you get the e60 from so the 66,000 horsepower and they had six ge 780 b traction motors uh of course drawing power via alternating current now this enhancement pack is from a one uh woodman woodmeister uh, Anthony Wood of Searchlight Simulations, one of the one of the you know awesome crew over at Searchlight. Uh, he kind of threw this thing together and figured, what the hell, let it rip and and released it. Now he hasn't publicly released it uh, via oh, I don't know what to say, like a website, but he did release it or kind of dropped it, you know, for people to check out, test of sorts on the Train Sim Community Discord. Now, I'm sure a majority of you are already on Train Sim Community Discord. If you're not, there's always some nice stuff floating around there, some unusual chatter here and there, uh, generally pertaining to mountains and uh, stuff like that and just other random shit. Uh, but it's currently on there. Now, if he's happy enough with it and all things checked out, he said that he's probably going to put it on the Searchlight Simulations uh, webpage uh, as like a free download if I if I gathered all that correctly so we're just gonna take a look at this thing here um, and and see how she runs alrighty so we are currently inside the cab uh, of the E60 and so a lot of things were done to this I don't know exactly what I uh, didn't give a full rundown um, which I probably should have asked him in hindsight but there's definitely a lot of things that I've noticed that have changed with this thing and definitely for the better as well. Uh, now, one of the things I noticed right from the get-go is the interior. 
So a lot of the repo stuff, you know, never looked all that bad, but I feel like this control stand had kind of like that laminated look to it, uh, where everything was kind of like shiny. It was just covered in this lacquer, if you will, or like a clear coat. And this no longer has that. Now, I may have totally been tripping balls into thinking that that's what the original thing looked like, but I feel like this looks totally different. I don't know if some of it's been up -rezzed or whatever, but it looks a little different, and it looks a lot better. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, you know, it was last year. I can't remember what I ate for breakfast, you know, but uh, it does look a little more crispy in here. So anyway, I have it in a cold and dark state, so let's go ahead and fire this thing up. That's, you know, that's what's nice about some of the repo stuff is it's, you know, it's a little more in depth, I guess you could say, uh, than a lot of the stuff that gets released on the Steam store for, uh, you know, North American content and beyond. So uh, let's get over here and turn on the battery. And we'll just kind of listen to everything that, uh, that happens as well. Let's go ahead and crack that window open while we're at it. There's been almost a complete sound overhaul, so I'm going to try and not talk too, too much, which I know might be difficult. It's kind of the point of the video, but we're just going to try and listen to a lot of stuff here. So let's go ahead and turn that battery or close the switch anyway and complete the circuit. All right, so the battery is on. Uh, blower breaker. There's a blower breaker. Got to be up here. No, here it is. There's the blowers. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. I like. Uh, all right. Local control breaker. Breaker breaker. So that gives us access to the power being generated now in the cab, the uh, local control. Uh, let's see. What else we got to do? Train line. That uh, headlights may as well go ahead and get that so we can get lights going. Uh, running light breakers, that's these guys. Uh, motor cut out, both trucks in, so that's down here, I think. All right, so it is already set. So we got so you could choose actually if you wanted just the front truck's power, the rear, so on and so forth. So we're gonna have both, obviously. Uh, let's see, panto rear, that's gonna be. Right, you know, of course you could use the front if you wanted to. They're both located in the same spot, which is what's funny about the wording on this panel. Um, you know, but they do face uh, different directions for, for what it's worth. Uh, so now we're going to go over to the control stand and click the Norm Panto down up. The wording on that is really weird to me as well. It's like Norm Panto down. To me, that makes me think you're turning it off, putting it down yet you're flipping the switch up you know it's just the way I decipher that all right so panto raise this of course is down here and you're gonna hold that button in for a little bit and you should see the line on light which is right there right where the dynamic brake dialog box is uh, once it does and it should raise the panto as of right now as you can see it is not up go ahead and hold that down a minute Go. You could actually hear the the little like sound transition and the thing you know raising, and there it is. Now it is up. All right, so let's go ahead and get everything set up here. So let's we'll get our front headlights set to dim. Let's get our number lights on, instrument lights on. Uh, I didn't set that breaker back there, so I'm gonna have to do that. I'm gonna leave the strobe lights off. They just annoy me personally. Uh, let's see. All right, so we're gonna turn on the alerter as well. I'm gonna leave ATC off for now, just because it's like a test run. I don't want the thingy breaking me, you know, out of nowhere. I think these are the cameras. They don't really do anything. We'll turn them both on. Uh, circuit breaker, trans oil pump. I honestly have no clue what that that does. I don't think it does anything with the operation of the unit in Train Simulator. Um, yeah, if any of you guys know, as always, or if I miss anything, as usual, let me know in the comments below. Uh, let's see, front class lights. We'll leave those off. Front number lights on. Rear number lights on. 
Cab light control, we'll put that on in case we need to put them on. Uh, rear Panto is up. I think we're gravy. So uh, let's see. Radio on. Grub lights, we're going to leave those off. Let's go get back in the seat. All right, so let's just go outside and listen to this thing for a minute here. There we go. So these are 1,000% better sounds. These are totally new sounds as part of this pack. And they sound way more gooder. Uh, the, the, the initial sounds that come with the pack by default when you buy it off Steam, they just sounded very old. You know, the compression was all weird. Just very, very like monotone, kind of like my voice. Uh, you know, just didn't, didn't sound all that great. It sounded very old. It's like you're listening to it through a friggin' tin can or something. That, that sounds like a absolute ass ton of electricity just surging in this thing, ready to be unleashed. Uh, there's also compressor sounds. I heard them earlier. Um, you know, they kick on every now and then. It's GE. It's got that traditional GE sound. Anyway, maybe we'll hear them later. Anyhow, all right, let's get back in here. All right, guys, we're back inside. Yeah, it does seem a lot less shiny in here because the repo stuff has usually got that kind of weird gloss, I feel like. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. Maybe it's some of the dovetail models. I don't, I don't know. I feel like it looks different. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm gonna have to go back and like delete this pack and just reinstall the thing and, and really check. All right, let's get the light back off. All right, so as you see, uh, the reverser is currently in the neutral position. So I'm, I'm just gonna try and shut up here for a minute. We'll throw this thing forward and have a listen here. Let's go outside, matter of fact, and listen. Dude, that sounds good. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's see if we can do it interior wise here. Let's let that shut back down. Here, wind it down. All right, let's see if we can do it inside and, and get the, the experience all over again here. Yeah. You can still hear it. That's pretty baller. That's pretty baller. Okay. Let's get the uh, Andy on. So I think he changed the the brake handle sounds as well. I know these sounds were changed. The uh, the control handles. I'm, yeah, those were not the default sounds. And I'm confusing the shit out of this motor right now, throwing that you know forwards and backwards. Yeah, so those are new sounds. Uh, they sounded very thin and tinny before by default. Try and listen to the brake handle sounds here. I think it's, uh, it's a, I think it's 26 stand, obviously. All right, so it does bail. I think it already bailed uh, by default. Let's get the auto train brake off. I think those are new sounds as well. Like, a, like it needs to be greased or oiled or something. You can hear that metal, metal and metal scrape sounds screeching. I think those are new as well. All right, looks like we've been cut loose. All right, it looks good. All right, here's our. Uh, or ammeter gauges, I don't know what they call them. In this thing, I'm just going to assume that. Let's go ahead and give her one notch of ruski. Got the amps. Nicely building. I just love the hum in here, man.
that sounds legit man those those freaking fan sounds outside compared to like before and this thing's default state and there we go there goes the next point that i was hoping to make the alerter sound has been changed as well that is that proper you know old school submarine kind of like dive sound if you will um this thing by default did not have that um that has been changed as well you just heard it um i heard that earlier so i was, I was hoping it was coming but it sounds good it sounds like it should very nice go ahead and check out the horn while we're at it holy crap thing went off again system course is the very unique po123568912 58 bravo uh horn we'll go ahead and take a look at the model it's a unique horn the the bells are just all over the place and crazy um but you know these things had them that's that's what they had anyway so the horn sound uh, in this thing by default when it came out on the Steam Store was not terrible. It honestly was not terrible. A lot of a lot of Repo's horns weren't uh, weren't that bad to begin with. And I'm talking like broad spectrum of everything that's ever been released on Steam. His are definitely in some of the you know the the higher echelons of content. Anyway, so I'd also like to point out as well. You'll see there's there's headlight flares which are, those are not default headlight flares either. The headlight flares that came with this thing by default were the, that old kind of like repo. It's almost like a, like a green color with the, the massive, you know, action movie flares. Um, you know, it's, if you're doing like photography, then yes, shit looks like that. But for the most part, you know, I'm not a fan of the giant flares like that, generally. Uh, anyway, those, again, these here, uh, are not default, and they are not part of this pack. But what I will do is link down below as well, where you can go and find uh, this uh, specific mod that adds these flares. And these flares are the Searchlight Simulations flares, just to, you know, get that on the table. So, uh, if you do end up installing these mods, I would install that first, because I think it has a horn sound that comes with it. And then this one here that we're looking at on top of that one. Or or neither. Or, you know, whatever the hell you want to do. It doesn't matter. But uh, anyway, those flares, just to note, are not part of this pack. You know, I don't know if that'll change. Probably not. Man, that thing's going off pretty damn constantly. Anywho, let's get this thing going. Let's, let's check the horn out here. That sounds very beefy. That is definitely not the default horn that came with this thing. It does have that horn occlusion uh, in in the cab. I think it had that by default. That was that was built in or scripted in or whatever the hell the technical gobbledygook is. Uh, that was a thing from before, but the horn is definitely a new sound. It does sound very nice and very very correct. It sounds great interior-wise. It's got that nice you know kind of closed-in reverb sound. We'll go outside and have a listen. That sounds like a one, two, three, five. That's a nice, that's a nice sounding horn. We'll, we'll back up a little bit here. Alerter's going off. Yeah, that's what they sound like. You know, of course, I've never seen one of these things in the flesh. I've seen pretty much any, any, you know, video that you can find on the interwebs. And that's what they sound like. It sounds really good. All right, now, let us haul ass. All right, so you can hear the traction motors kind of calm and alive, that, that, you know, that deep kind of whine. It's not a whine, but like a yawing G traction motor, right? And again, to be fair, the uh, the default Repo E60 traction motor sounds were not bad, um, but it was it was just the fans, the blowers, all that was just very like kind of crunchy, crusty sounding. 
Something else you'll notice as well is you've got some cab rattle. This thing is a, just a giant old hulking, you know, piece of steel and machinery and electrical cables and stuff. Stuff rattles. These things were old. Well, they use these well into the early 2000s. Um, just listen here for a minute. It sounds nice. And it's gradual as well. It's not, um... Those over those, uh... Those joints that switch back there. You can hear that as well. That was not default either. Still hear the traction motors. We're holding steady at 113 amps. Give her another notch. So all that rattling and everything is gradual. Like, it doesn't happen as soon as you pull away from the platform. You know, it, it takes time. You need to build a little speed. This notch three. Still hear the traction motors pretty good. Notch four. Just let the amps kind of level out here a little bit. Now I've only got six barrels on this thing. Six amp fleets. This thing was 6,000 horsepower. Okay, yes, Amtrak did have a lot of problems with them. That's why they kind of got relegated down to 90 mile an hour. But listen, now that the rattles are becoming more prominent, very squeaky. Need some WD-40 in this son bitch. So we're doing about 60 mile an hour. Amps are going down, so go ahead and give her another notch. That's number five. That just sounds so authentic. And organic, I don't know, I've never been in one of these, obviously, I've never operated one, but god damn, if it doesn't sound like what you think it would sound like in this thing. Still hear the traction motors? Let's go outside and have a listen. sound there see this what's nice interior and exterior sounds need to be different a lot of the stuff we get just you know bog standard on the steam store they are not it's just you know quieted or sometimes not even all right notch six by golly stick it up your rear fra we're gonna do 125 We're already doing like 90 here. Not seven. Can hear a little bit of wind. Sounds like kind of whipping in. There's a difference. Window open and closed. And the Ocho. Now, Olden coming up here. We're, of course, on a Washington, Baltimore bit, uh, the Northeast Corridor. good too i don't know if he touched the uh 
you know, the, the physics portion of things, but it also feels a little different. It may be because I haven't run this thing in a while, and just when you add, you know, nicer, newer sounds and everything to it, it just, it changes the experience a lot, right? And that horn as well, I might as well mention, that, uh, that PO-1235, who was the charger name in that horn, man? Um, that might be from that other pack I was talking about as well. I'll go ahead and link that, uh, like I said, as well as the Amfleet 1 enhancement pack that comes with this thing, uh, just in case. That's a, that's a pretty damn good sounding horn, though. So anyway, getting back to the physics thing, I mean, we're holding pretty steady at about 100 mile an hour. Um, you know, the thing doesn't feel too OP, please nerf, or anything like that. It's, uh, it's, it's nice and steady. You know, this, like I said, this is only six cars we were pulling away from the platform, but it still kind of gradually, you know, did it. You know, I don't know if he actually changed the amps. If he did, if he changed, like, the drag coefficient, the weight, something like that, I don't know. But it, it does feel a little bit different. I may be totally whacked out of my gourd here. All right, so we're doing about a buck eight. Let's, uh, let's do a run by, shall we? things have changed uh, you know in the right areas mostly it is just a, a sound pack um, of sorts but uh, man if it doesn't just totally transform this thing into uh, you know just a totally different beast uh, one thing I did not check is the bell so that is definitely a new bell that's not the default bell Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not. And this radio, man, I swear to God, I, I heard some radio chatter earlier when I was messing with this thing. It wasn't a lot, but it was there. Unless I'm just losing my mind more and more here. But I swear I heard some radio chatter. Let's go ahead and go turn off the ATC. Or I'm sorry, the alerter. There we go. And we're just going to have... Uh, listen, I like how you can hear like wind now. That's that's cool. It's like if you're going down the highway or something in your car, whatever, and you roll the window down, you're doing like 80. You know, it's got that very loud buffeting sound. All right, let's just we're gonna mess around with some notches here, exterior.
that is completely off. Let's go ahead and throw a minimal reduction. Now we are going downhill. Almost 1% down. Just drop it a bit more. nice and gentle like I, I don't remember the physics being horrible on this thing by default but they just seem a little different now a little bit more So that was a nice braking distance. Uh, I don't know if it was like 30 pounds put down or something, but, you know, it wasn't super fast, and, it, you know, it eventually stopped us. Uh, this thing is totally transformed. This is a very nice enhancement pack. Uh, I hope he does indeed um, release this thing uh, and put it up on the uh, Searchlight Simulations uh, page, their official store. Because uh, you already kind of released it, like I said, on the Train Sim Community website, just to mess around with the test. It's not like in any kind of official capacity, uh, from what I understand. But got to the dam, if this thing isn't uh, isn't pretty freaking amaze balls. Uh, it it totally transforms this thing. It sounds like a friggin' beast now. It sounds like it should, uh, and it already looks pretty damn good. But uh, that's it, guys. Just a quick look at the uh, enhancement pack update thingamabob um, for the E60. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>